scar of oxygen gas. The combustible brightened up and set fire to the metal, which burnt for a short time in a very brilliant and pieces of zinc, then added to them some diluted sulfuric acid. An effervescence took place and hydrogen contents into the fissures. Inflammation immediately took place. Light, heat and smoke were emitted and the little volcano vomited forth flames. He presented them to Davy and said, you know, give us a job. <laughs> and uh, Davy gave him an interview and said, my advice would be to stick to the bookbinding, that science is a hard taskmaster and doesn't pay. Uh, and Faraday then said, oh, well, uh, but, but men of science, I'm sure, have such wonderful moral characters and so on. And Davy laughed and said a few years would show him that was wrong as well. Uh, but, uh, it, it, but Faraday still persisted, you know, please give me a job. And he seems perhaps to have done some copying out of things then for Davy. Uh, but later on, luckily, the, uh, well, the, the, the assistant here got into a fight with an instrument maker and got fired. And Davy offered the job to Faraday. At first, Faraday washed bottles and made copies of Davy's notes. It was tough. People treated the working-class Faraday like a servant. But Faraday was determined to serve science, come what may. As well as a burning curiosity, Faraday was inspired by his religion. From childhood, he had been a committed member of an obscure Puritan sect called the Sandemanians. Sandemanians believe every word in the Bible to be literally true and think the natural world has been created according to God's plan. It was the duty of Faraday the scientist to understand that plan. He seems to have been really dedicated to finding out about nature. And he gave this a kind of religious significance. Uh, God was to be worshipped in Sunday as part of his Sandemanian faith, uh, but was also being worshipped in the laboratory as you found out more about God's works. This is the laboratory where Faraday assisted the great Davy. At the time, he, and indeed all the great men of European science, were completely baffled by a phenomenon they called electromagnetism. They'd observed strange things happening when they placed a compass needle near a wire. When no electricity flowed through the wire, the needle pointed north as usual. But when they passed an electric current through the wire, the needle twisted. No one could explain why. Then lowly lab assistant Michael Faraday turned his untutored mind to this enigma. Take one fresh and tender kiss one stolen night of bliss Frank. One girl, one boy So where is he? Some grief, some joy In 1819, the 28-year-old Faraday asked his bosses if he could investigate the mysteries of electromagnetism. They indulged him never guessing that the blacksmith's son would outthink them all. Faraday is self-taught, so he doesn't have any preconceptions, mm. very bright, clearly, mm. and um, he's not a mathematician, so he's not going to sit down and try and puzzle out the equations, which would then probably it was a bit premature to do that. Mm. Instead, he's sitting there thinking, how does it all work, and what what angle can I find on this to do some little experiment to check whether I'm thinking about this the right mm. way? Mm. And he, he really puzzles it out through the experiments and through physical images in his head. Mm. And that was a very powerful combination. And for that problem, right. that was a very fruitful way of going about it. Faraday's insight was as simple as it was brilliant. 
Suppose, he said, there is a circular magnetic force coming from the electricity flowing through the wire. That would explain why the needle twisted. The great men of science thought this idea was ridiculous. A circular force? Preposterous! In my shed, Faraday expert Professor Dave Gooding is going to show me how Faraday did his first great experiment to try and prove his doubters wrong. He hung a copper wire above a magnetic rod which was glued to the base of a glass cup. He then filled the cup with mercury, a liquid metal which conducts electricity. If Faraday was right about the circular force, then once an electric current flowed through the wire, it would spin round the magnet. So here we've got the battery, mm -hmm. and we've got the current coming through there and into these terminals. Yeah, and it goes up yeah. there into yeah. the mercury. That wire into goes the down mercury. into it's the mercury. It's not attached to anything else. It just no, goes... It goes into the mercury, and, and the, mercury, the mercury, liquid metallic conductor. OK, right. so it conducts, but the wire can move in it. From the mercury, the current carries on up this wire and down to this terminal here. OK, this one. Faraday's still Humphrey Davies' assistant at this time. At this time, yes, yes, he was. And this was really uh, one of the first pieces of independent research. Yeah. Normally, he would make his notes in the uh, diary of the laboratory of the Royal Institution. But these were his own notes in his own notebook. And he was beginning to work more independently of Davy. So Faraday's scientific career was now at stake. If he was right, if the wire would indeed spin round the magnet, England's scientific toffs would have to accept this uneducated blacksmith's son into their fold. Uh, away it goes. <laughs> Let's see. Here it is, the world's first electric motor and vindication of Faraday's intuitive understanding of the divine plan. The only clue to how Faraday felt that day are two words in his diary, very satisfactory. He was very excited because for the first time he'd produced continuous motion, um, the mo movement of something, just from electricity and magnetism. <laughs> The scientific elite now accepted the South London boy, with one notable exception. Sir Humphrey Davy was jealous of his protégé's success. When a certificate was published nominating Faraday for the Royal Society, Davy was livid. And he told Faraday he ought to take the certificate down. But Faraday said, I didn't put it up, I'm not going to take it down. This is again Faraday's independence. <laughs>